Hello hello. Not so glad to see you. I was on vacation but my fucking puppeteer forced me to come back. He wants me to present another anamorphosis technique. It seems you liked my previous tutorial on quad reprojection, a great trick for faking perspective on rectangular screens. Go check it out in case you've missed it. Together, to go even further than the previous video, we will see how to make 3D content visuals for non-flat surfaces and curved walls. So, today, because I don't have the choice, let's go for another touch designer tutorial. Look at this. Even if the whole picture looks like crap, you give the audience a sweet spot to see your work undistorted from a specific point of view. It can be applied for both video mapping and lead walls, depending on your needs, setup, and budget. Don't worry, we will see the difference and the best way to approach each situation. And you know what? You probably heard about virtual production in movie making, aka OSVP, for on-set virtual production, aka green screen killer. It's the new way of blending physical and digital worlds in which lead panels are used as a backdrop for a set in television and film production. We will build something similar. Hell yeah, the video you see at the bottom is only a texture on a plane. Explanation at the top. That's great. Now you just have to buy an entire film studio, hundreds square meters of lead screens, a camera and a decent tracking system. Once it is done, let's discover how everything can be built inside Derivative Touch Designer. In fact no, this time, the lesson starts in Blender, the famous 3D software for people without money, like my master. Let's get started, you bitches. This step is not necessarily required, but in order to create an appropriate distortion, we probably should work with a good 3D model of our curved surface. If your surface looks like a primitive, like a cylinder, it can be made directly in touch. For more complex geometry, open your favorite 3D software. Don't worry it will be quite easy. Let's imagine I want to make visuals for these famous building corners around the globe. I need the exact dimensions and pixel resolution. Basic informations, actually. And perhaps something about the curvature. In my case, I will choose it arbitrarily because I don't give a fuck. I go for a screen of 10 meters by 20 meters by 10. In Blender, I can start with the default cube. Indicate its dimensions by pressing N key. 10 by 20 by 10. Go to edit mode, delete all the unwanted faces to keep only two of them. Control A, apply all transforms. Select the edge you want to bevel. Then Control B and apply the right curvature. Great, we now need to increase subdivision. It will be useful later in Touch Designer. Control R to do that. I try to have small square faces all around. Like this. We no need to unwrap the model in order to use the maximum of the UV space. Select all the faces. On your keyboard, press U, unwrap. Go to the UV editor and maximize the size of your unwrap. As I said, we need the full space. Right, that's it. Then export your model on your hard drive as an OBJ file. Now we have our 3D model, we have to discuss about what we are trying to achieve. The main goal is to define a specific spot, where the visual will be seen undistorted. I've already said that. We will create a camera that represent the exact spot from where the audience should see our content, and will get an image. After that, we will project our image onto our surface, from this camera. This is a well-known technique in filmmaking and VFX, called camera mapping. This way, our 3D render will become a simple texture image, applied on our geometry. Just one note, in many 3D softwares, this feature is, as the name says, a camera capability. In TD, it's happening in the light comps. We will see that later. That's the first step. But, now, you have two scenarios. First scenario, video mapping. If you want to use a video projector, you probably would like to locate your light source where it will not be in the way, let's say, at the opposite, for example. So, our content should be rendered from this point of view. The result is ready to be projected from there. In that case, the output should have the ratio of our device, 1.77, almost certainly. Second scenario, LED walls. For LED walls, this is different. The wall itself will emit some light, 
and we need to display the whole template as a big rectangle. So, to do that, we have to apply the texture to the UV of the geometry, then unfold it to obtain the final result. In that case, the final output should have the resolution of our lead wall, depending on its proportions. Workflow You understand that the main workflow is almost similar for both scenarios. From our main render, we will make the camera mapping onto our geometry. After that we will choose the specific process in order to get what we need, depending on our display method. Re-render from another point of view, for the video mapping. Or, UV unwrap, for LED screens. We will see now, how to build them inside the software. Let's have a quick look at the finished network we will build in a minute. I tried to organize everything to keep it as clear as possible. At the top, the network view. At the bottom left is a small visualization and bottom right is our final output. I have the ability to switch between my main 3D render, the output I need for video mapping, and finally the one for LED walls. As you can see, I can move my camera to fine tune where the sweet spot is, exactly. Right. I can now delete almost everything to rebuild it with you, guys. For now, I just want to keep few things. A simple geometry, lights and a camera. For easy navigation, I choose the well-known camera viewport from the palette. Let's import our screen model from our hard drive by just dropping it from our explorer. Create a null SOP and rename it null screen. It's a very important null, so I also choose a color for it. This step is not really necessary. But for easy understanding, I also plug it into a geometry comp, called Reference. It will allow me to understand the few next steps, and will deactivate it at the end. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot, for the camera viewport navigation, for now, I missed some interactivity. Right-click anywhere, choose the Open Parent Parameters option, and activate middle and right mouse buttons. Great. Now, a render top. With the camera viewport in the geometry parameter, write geos and reference. Okay, it's working, but not exactly what I need. I want my reference to be a wireframe. Inside, create a simple constant mat with the topology wireframe option. Then apply it as its material by typing dot slash constant one. Okay, that's better. Rename the render, main. For now, we just have a pretty basic rendering system. Just to be sure our main render use only the good lights, and not the next ones, write light 1 and ambient 1 in its parameter. This is the beginning of the fun part. We will set the camera mapping now. Or, to be more accurate, the light mapping. Create a light comp and set its position to 0, 0, 0. I need the light at the exact position of my camera. The easiest way to do that is the parenting system with the bottom connection of comp nodes. But, comps should be at the same network level to do that. So, I show you another method that can be useful if your light is not at the same level. Create an object shop and drag your camera as the target object. You can leave the reference object parameter empty so it will use the world origin. This way, we have in the chop the world transforms of our camera. Create a null comp and drag these channels as reference in the correct parameters. This time, connect your null to the light. When it's done, your light will follow exactly your main camera. Create a geometry comp and call it screen. This is the geometry that will receive our light projection. Oh, and rename the light, light cam map. Inside, delete the default torus, create a select SOP, and write the path of our null screen. Create a null SOP, and activate the render and display flags. Create now a constant mat. In its parameters, you should activate the option called Apply Projection Maps. 
Drag it to the geo to apply it as a material. Good. We have to set up the projection system now. In the light tab of the light comp, drag your main render as the projector map. In order to have exactly the same field of view, choose in the projector angle, the use view settings option. Go in the view tab, and for the fob angle parameter, we write in simple expression, to get the same focal length in the camera. Operator camera viewport.par.fov Our projection system is almost ready. Create a first annotate comp, and rename it, video mapping. Create a camera comp. This is where your video projector will be. Adjust its position. Let's create a render top. And it should render only the screen geo. With the light cam map. Fuck, that's broken. We need to activate one more option in the light. In the view tab, called aspect correct projection. Ha, huh, that's way better. Adjust the point of view, if needed. The video mapping system is finished. Another annotate comp. This time called lead wall. I made a mistake during the recording. You should duplicate the previous render top, to get the right geometries and lights, not create a new one. And the mode should be, not 2D, but UV unwrap. Nice. You can put, as the resolution, something corresponding to the aspect ratio of your screen. 3 on 1, in my case. Rename these renders. Last thing, to make this network easier to use, I create a switch top. I plug my main render as the first input, and my two distorted renders after that. In the palette, I'll go for a widget called Button Radio. And create three options inside quotation marks. Then a null chop, and this channel will drive my switch. I can now choose between every renders of my network. In order to display the good ratio of my lead wall render, I create a fit top, but no need to do that in your side. Once everything is set up correctly, it's quite easy to change the screen type you want to use. For virtual production, you want a concave screen and not a convex one. Create a tube sop. and increase subdivisions. A delete SOP to delete some points. I choose the bounding volume for that. I just want to keep the half of it. Create now a texture SOP to rearrange the UV over the remaining geometry. I choose the Rows and Columns option. Then a Transform SOP to put the screen at the right position. Plug it, and voila, look how easy it was. You have a decent virtual production setup. And of course, still possible with both LED screen and video projection. In that specific case, the camera should be tracked, of course, to make it work. Everything we saw today can, of course, be applied to other types of non-flat surfaces. Like, cubes, or room corners, or whatever.
The camera mapping doesn't really care about the topology of your space, and it will still work perfectly. Just be sure to work with correct 3D geometries in order to have the right result. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and you will make wonderful things. Don't hesitate to show me what you've done with this technique. Thanks for watching, and thumbs up if you're still there. As usual, the Touch Designer project file is available to download for my contributors on Patreon. I would like to reiterate my thanks for all the support I have on the platform. A special shout out for these ones. And you can also visit my puppeteer social medias. If you have some questions, ask him, because I'll be high for a while. See you next time.